Okay, I'm Italian. I have a little bit of a favor there, right? Um, so, oh, oh, oh and, oh, and he's sneaking up behind me here. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Chris Scott! <laughs> Hello, Victoria. How are you today? Whoa, every time I get here, it seems like it gets more beautiful. I love it here. You guys got a great looking city. I, I already got a place in Alberta, so I'm not too far. <laughs> but we got a good news, bad news, and good news situation here, ladies and gentlemen. The good news is, after about a year and a half of struggling through this when the last time I told you in the winter we would just have to hold on and just say no to that booster shot and these mandates would start to go away and finally they pushed the mandates on the wrong group they pushed it on the trucker convoy and those brave men and women stood up and we finally achieved what I've been trying to achieve for a year and a half a little something called United Non Compliance and not just here, but everywhere around the world. After I spoke in Ottawa, there were convoys launching in Australia. There were convoys launching in Israel, Brazil, uh, the Netherlands. Places all over the world that would have never even thought to do it if Canadians didn't set the example. It's, so do a round of applause with these brave truckers. I know they're coming here in a couple of days. The truckers proved beyond any doubt, just like I've been saying all along, that United Non-Compliance is up to each and every one of us to work together and just say no. We can't rely on politicians. We can't rely on the police, as you can see. In fact, the truckers were the inspiration for these new special sweaters that I made because it shows that we need to look out for each other. The brave men in society need to show people that they're ready to lead this fight. The brave women in society need to show that they're ready to stand up for their children from here on out. And the brave youth of society need to show what we are fighting for, which is their future. And that's what we got to keep fighting for, ladies and gentlemen, because even though we were somewhat successful, that was the good news. We got United Non-Compliance. Phase two really kicked off, taking action. We took action. Millions descended upon Ottawa, and millions were protesting around the country to the point that you stopped hearing about COVID on the news, and all of a sudden you started hearing about Vladimir Putin. Yep. And it wasn't by accident. It's because they needed to try to let a little air out of the balloon. We were, we were causing too much havoc for them. But we made headway. We forced them to relinquish a lot of the mandates. We forced them to relinquish the mask mandates. We were forced them to relinquish the vaccine passports somewhat. But it's a false sense of victory. Now here's the bad news. They didn't do it because they genuinely are ready to end this. They didn't do it because they were genuinely felt like they had no choice. They did it because they knew it was the best way to make you lower you guard and lull you back into submission. And it worked. The numbers here are a lot smaller than they would have been if they didn't get rid of that mask mandate a few days ago. Everybody thinks it's all over. But it's not over, ladies and gentlemen. It's not over. It's not they haven't over. changed course. They just changed. They just changed directions on the way to the same goal. Now let me explain what I mean. At first, when this all started out, they wanted to look like the good guys, and they had you terrified. And they provided you this wonderful solution called a vaccine, an experimental gene therapy injection that's far more dangerous than they ever could have imagined, or probably they knew, but at least that they told us about. But when they gave you that solution, they used coercion to make you take it because they knew people didn't really trust it. So here was a Krispy Kreme donut. Here's an ice cream for your kids. 
And when that didn't work enough, they had no choice but to change directions. And they went with brute force. And they showed their tyrannical true colors. And they mandated it across the board. And they called you racist, misogynist, and worse, terrorists. If you refuse to take an experimental injection, proven to be very dangerous and in lots of cases deadly. You're a terrorist if you won't let us inject you with something that could kill you. Absolute insanity. And that came to a head with the trucker convoy and this massive worldwide movement to stand up against the tyranny. So once again, they were forced to change direction. They changed from coercion to brute force and now they're using subterfuge. They lowered your guard by pretending to release the restrictions and they distracted you with a fake war in the Ukraine. And look how effective it had been. Right before Vladimir Putin invaded the Ukraine, don't be fooled. Because right before that, every single person in Canada and around the world knew the media was spouting lies. Knew that Trudeau and Freeland were against the people. Hell, she just finished freezing bank accounts of Canadian citizens without any charges or due process or recourse and arbitrarily closed down 39 trucking companies because they disagreed with the government's mandatory vaccination policy. And they were seen as tyrants and villains as they should have been. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, Putin's invading Ukraine. We need to stand with Ukraine. And Christia Freeland is literally leading a march of tens of thousands of cheering Canadians like she's a hero of the country just a few hours later. And everybody's back supporting Trudeau and Biden and already even talking about trying to send military aid to Ukraine and our money and our weapons and eventually our people. For what? For what? For absolutely nothing. What has affected your life more in the last two years? Vladimir Putin and Ukraine? Or the Canadian government and their restrictions and their war on your family? Yeah! Exactly my point. So do not let them distract you. That's part of the subterfuge. The other part we already talked about is the supposed lowering of restrictions. But make no mistake. They are just simply turning the boiler on simmer. They are not turning off the stove, ladies and gentlemen. If they relinquish the mask mandates and vaccine passports completely, completely, in the fall, when they inevitably are going to bring them back, it would be almost impossible to convince Canadians that you need to put on a mask again. And it would be almost impossible to convince Canadians to take another jab. But when they tell you it's gone, except at places like the zoo or over here or over here, and throughout the summer while you're trying to enjoy your life and get back to normal, the entire time you're still seeing people with masks. You're still being served by people with masks. And then all of a sudden in the fall they're going to tell you, oh, we got a brand new vaccine. And it doesn't matter if you took one dose, two dose, three dose, or four or five of the other ones. This is a brand new one. And it doesn't matter about anything else. You can start fresh. And you're only going to need one a year. This one is so good, you're only going to need one a year. And that's going to be the excuse to bring back the mandates. It's going to be the excuse to bring back the vaccine passports. And the agenda just moves forward unabated. But it's even worse than that. Because, well, they make you think they're lowering the restrictions with every intention of bringing them back. While they have you distracted looking at Vladimir Putin and Ukraine, right under your nose, they are passing the most sweeping and country-changing legislation in the history of our great nation. Yep. It's called Bill S-233, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. You ever heard of this one yet? You guys have, thank goodness, somebody has. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Bill S-233 is literally the hallmark of communism. It's universal basic income. Now, if you don't understand what that means, everybody knows how CERB works. People that aren't working are getting a certain amount of money every month for a certain amount of months. Well, universal basic income is a certain amount of money for every single man and woman aged 17 and older, regardless of their situation, for the rest of their lives and forever to come, including the four to 500,000 
new Canadians that they're importing every single year. This to be paid for, of course, by you. This is part of their so-called Great Reset. Everything they are doing is to try to take more and more of your money and to try to make you less and less able to fight back. That's why they closed your business. And now they want to pass this law under your nose. And it's even worse than that. There is a stipend in there that says you're only eligible for this if you meet the standard health requirements. And guess what the number one requirement is going to be, everybody? Max. Thank you. And it's even worse than that. When you look at the finer print, it tells you that this is not just going to apply to this universal basic income scheme. Oh, no. Once we have the digital currency in place that is already being worked on, this is going to apply to your pensions, your social security, any type of unemployment or in, uh, insurance benefits, or even your pay stub if you're a government employee. So you will not be able to even get paid unless you get jabbed. And that's what they're passing right now. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is an actual law in the Senate that turns Canada into China overnight. And it will take more and more of your tax dollars to the point where your income tax is going to be something like 60, 70, 75%. And you're supposed to own nothing and be happy. That is what they have planned. And digital ID is another huge factor. It's already a reality. It is already in play. You cannot stop this one from coming. But what you can do is simply refuse to use it. And if enough people just say no, they cannot make it mandatory. Because just like with the vaccines, this is all about compliance. There's a reason that BC has the worst restrictions in all of Canada. You guys comply the most. I literally walked into a cafe over here. They were so happy and excited to try to scan my QR code that I don't have that I couldn't believe it. Like these, I've never seen anybody literally embrace slavery with open arms and a smile ever in my life. But that's why BC was locked down and Alberta, you're eating in restaurants and nobody's walking around in masks because over there we blocked the border. Over here, you guys are, didn't do anything except comply. And the more you comply, the more restrictions. And that's what's going to happen all across the board, not just with the vaccine. If you comply with the digital ID, and they're trying to get you to do it with the banks. Every single one of you works uh, has a, probably a bank account, one of the main banks. So simply go to Google, try this out after. If you want bank with BMO, for instance, type in BMO digital ID. Boom, it'll bring you up to their advertising page for it. And it just shows you how easy and how convenient life will be if you just sign up to this digital ID. It is trying everything. They're at coercion, just like they were with the vaccine. They're going to be at coercion, then they're going to go tyranny because they want you to be forced onto a digital ID. Then people like me can be banned from places like Facebook, Twitter, Telegram, etc. for life. Because when you try to create an account, you're gonna have to use your digital ID, which is like a digital fingerprint. You're gonna have to use that when you work so they can blacklist you. You're gonna have to use that when you can travel. And when they bring the next pandemic out in the fall, we're already at the Delta Cron variant, by the way, if you're yeah. keeping track. Yeah. So it didn't go away, ladies and gentlemen. They're just going <laughs> to keep it going. And who knows what it's going to be called by then, the Babylon 10 variant. <laughs> but they're going to tell you it's dangerous and you need this jab. And then they're going to bring back the Vax Pass. And once you merge the vaccine passport with the digital identity and a digital currency, you are cooked like dinner. You are you can't do anything. There's no more united non-compliance at that point, ladies and gentlemen. Because united non-compliance relies on the fact that right now, every single one of you in this crowd is an individual with a little bit of power. And when we all come together with one voice, we have a lot of power. And that's how we make change. Not through political voting, through the work that we've been doing on the ground, supporting the truckers, supporting each other, supporting events like this, supporting people like me, etc., etc. That's where change comes from. But in their new world, under a vaccine passport, digital identity, digital currency world, you are no longer an individual with a little bit of power. You are now a blip on a screen where they could literally flick a switch, and easier than swatting a fly, you're done.
You can't work, you can't travel, nobody can help you, you can't even, you can't even have any type of transactions beyond barter at that point. So how do we stop this? Simple. You do not use digital ID. You do not let them ban cash. You do not support the war in Ukraine. And you tell every single person about Bill S-233 because when they start talking about it and everybody starts talking about it, just like when everyone started talking about the trucker convoy, the news had to start talking about it. And as soon as the news has to actually acknowledge S-233, they're going to have to explain to 37 million Canadians that are currently, most of them working, why now a large portion of their monthly payments are going to be going towards paying for everybody else for the rest of their lives. And that's not Canada. Universal basic income has failed every single time it was tried. It was even tried in Canada under Kathleen Wynne. I can't remember where she tried it. It was somewhere in Ontario. And even on a very small scale, it quickly spiraled out of control and it didn't help anybody. And if you do it on a countrywide scale, it is a way of consolidating all the wealth and power from the people to the government. And if you haven't noticed, that's exactly what they've been doing the entire time. Absolutely! Once again, that is why I made these. Because we cannot rely on anybody but ourselves. You cannot wait for an election. I had already people asking me, oh, you think uh, Kenny's going to get back in? You think this... Does it matter? Oh. Did, did any of the politicians help get rid of the restrictions? No. The conservatives jumped on board after millions of Canadians stood up and, and already started marching towards Ottawa. Just because they always need to feed you the idea that there's a political opposition. There was no political opposition for the past two years. The Conservatives, the Liberals, the NDP, they were all in lockstep. Everybody supported all types of mandates. Everybody supported gun bans. Everybody supported travel mandates. And if you haven't noticed, by the way, while we're all celebrating our newfound freedoms, we're still prisoners in our home country. You can't leave unless you're jabbed. You have to literally cross a border like a, like a, like a Central American refugee trying to sneak into the United States of America from Canada. We are literally landlocked by our own government. And if we let this go another year, the next step will be landlocking us within our own provinces. And then you won't be, and if you already know they landlocked you with different checkpoints within your own province, you guys were divided up into three zones. I know because the day that I was coming to Vancouver to launch my book, I was arrested two days before that. And they had no choice but to let me out, and they thought they were going to stop me from getting here. But after nine cars and a helicopter to fly over your new, new instituted checkpoints, like I was playing Grand Theft Auto, but for real life, <laughs> we launched the book. And to this day, it is now still the only book in the history of the world banned by Amazon. That's right. And you know why? Because it told you everything that was going to happen, and it's going to tell you everything that's going to happen. At this point, it should be required reading. And at this point, I already let the cat out of the bag, so I'm going to tell you everybody, because I wanted to dig in deep to Justin, because he deserves it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only up. reason my book exists today is because Justin Trudeau's own half-brother, Mr. Kyle Kemper, contacted me via back channels and hooked me up with the idea and the people that can make it happen. So we gotta thank Justin Trudeau indefin <laughs> indirectly for my book. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, so I said it's a good news, bad news situation. The good news was we came this far. Enough people just said no that they basically had to give up at the booster number three. In Alberta, they didn't even convince 30% of the people to take it. That means it's done. It's that simple. They did, a, they did a poll in Ontario on a far leftist uh, radio outlet. And they had, I don't know how many thousands of people in the poll, but they said, will you be willing to get more shots? About 28% of the people said, yes, I'll get more shots. Whatever that means. They didn't even say how many more, which is even more scary. But 38% said they're not willing to get any more shots. And that is a huge number, because those are the people we need to reach to stop this. Because the other 20-something percent, or it was almost 30, it was like 29 percent said, I never took any shots. <laughs> and let's give a round of applause to those people. 
But I'm not worried about you people. You're like me. You'll never take a jab, no matter what they try to do to you. We gotta worry about the people that they coerced to take the two jabs. And there's only two types of people. There are the people that took it willingly, and you know them, because even after the mask mandate was rescinded, they're walking alone outside wearing a mask and keeping like 30 feet away from you. And those people are gonna be really hard to reach, let me tell you, because they're absolutely terrified. So for them, the only thing to try to reach them is love and compassion. And that's what I've been telling everybody. That's what we try to spread around here. When United Noncompliance comes from love and compassion, you end up with the Civilian Protective Service. <laughs> and everybody's looking out for each other like family. I got that idea when I toured the northern BC and northern Alberta. Because when you go to those northern smaller towns, they treat everyone like family. And what do I mean by that? You never ask your family members to wear a mask or take a jab or sign a QR code to come inside your house. I hope. But they won't. And if you treat everybody who comes into town and everybody else in town like family, like that, they can never make these restrictions work in your town. And if they can't make them work in your town, they can't make them work in the next town and the next town and the next town. They might be able to get them in the city because there's a lot of weak and ignorant people in the city. But if you can get the small towns, town after town after town after town, that's where you make change. And that's why I love touring those areas. And the other kind of double jab people are the ones that were coerced either by, oh, you can't go to school, you can't go to work, you can't travel. Those are the ones you can reach, maybe not with love and compassion, because they're already, it's not really fear that's driving them. They're not afraid genuinely like the, the guy still wearing the mask running away from you. Those guys you can reach with love and compassion because they're genuinely afraid. The other people are kind of selfish. They took it for their own personal reasons. Like, I had people tell me they took it so they could go and play volleyball at the community center. I swear to you, I'm not making that up. So when you have somebody that will do it for that, I figured the best way, and this actually really works now, and it works because there's so much information about the jab now that shows how dangerous it really, really is. So now nobody wants to take it. Nobody wants to take another one. So you know what I tell to all the people that walk around proud with their QR code that took it just so they could go to work or go to travel or go to this place? I tell them, I dare you to go take another one. And reverse psychology works surprisingly well on these people. And that's all we need to do because as soon as that compliance drops below around 70% for anything, the vaccine, the mask, the digital identity, they cannot implement it. They cannot mandate it. As long as everything is an option, I'm okay. I'm all about freedom of choice. I don't care if you want to go take 30 vaccines. As long as they tell me I don't have to take one. I don't care if you want to use digital ID and sit on your couch all day and live in the metaverse. I want to live in the real world, so I'm going to be out here doing my thing. As long as we have freedom, that is what we are fighting for. And that is what they are trying to take away. S-233 aren't the only bills that they're putting in. That's the most dangerous one because it changes our country fundamentally into a communist style dictatorship. But to try to make sure that we don't have the same tools to fight back, they're trying to pass other laws. And you gotta watch out for these. We gotta make noise about them. Internet censorship laws. If you think the fact checkers are bad now, if these laws pass, you don't even wanna know what it's gonna be like. Thankfully, oh, that just reminded me, I'm gonna be launching my own social media platform very soon, connected to my website. That's right, a true free speech platform. Because while the government is trying to take away your rights, I tell you to know your rights, protect your rights, otherwise they will take your rights. That's what I'm trying to do here. And it's going to be launching soon on realchrissky.com. So everybody take note of that, because that's going to be very important. The other thing they want to do is criminalize protests like this, and even criminalize supporting people like me. And if you think that's far-fetched, well, didn't they just finish freezing people's bank accounts for trying to support a legitimate protest in a trucker convoy? Or did I, is that a conspiracy theory, too, that just happened? So you know where this is going, ladies and gentlemen, and you know how to stop it. The best way to get rid of Trudeau at this point would be to get a vote of no confidence. There's people against him in his own party. If you even got the liberals on board, the conservatives would be on board. If you could get somebody in power, a new person in power, they would be far more likely to submit to the demands of the people because we need to move this from phase two of United Noncompliance, taking action, 
and finish getting all of our freedoms back. And that means a relinquishing of all the federal mandates and they can't come back ever. And new legislation to prevent pandemic emergency measures from forcing people to close their businesses, forcing masks on our children, and forcing people to take an experimental bioweapon and call it a vaccine. This is what we need to do to protect ourselves, protect our family, and protect our children's future. Because they're going to try to stall United Noncompliance right where it is, near the end of phase two. Because they don't want to see phase three come. But a lot of them are already feeling it. You're already seeing resignations. You're already seeing charges being laid in other countries. And we got to keep that pressure on. We got to keep it going. Well, they're going to try to lull you into submission with a summer of fun. I encourage you to enjoy the summer with your family, but never stop supporting the movement. The truckers are mobilizing as we speak. They're on their way here. They're on their way to Vancouver. They're on their way to Coos. They're still around Ottawa. We need to support every movement around the country that is genuinely fighting for our freedom. Because when the fall comes, what did Bonnie Henry already tell you guys? It's coming back. Thank you. She literally told you. They call that predictive programming, by the way, and it's the number one tool for brainwashing. They tell you the, what, they tell you the exact thing they're going to do to you, something so horrible you never want it to happen. So they tell you way in advance, it'll never happen. Then, like, right away, someone in power, someone with authority, will tell you, oh, well, you know, it's probably going to happen eventually. So they plant it in your head that eventually those are going to come back. So now you're already in your mind having like this idea that you better really enjoy summer because you know the restrictions are coming back. Subconsciously, you already know it, every single one of you. Even the ones of you that are awake are affected by predictive programming. So now think about the people that are asleep. They hear this and it doesn't even occur to them. Then when they hear it three months from now, oh yes, the restrictions are coming back. They've already submitted, they've already given in. And now, when the restrictions do come back, the government has already nullified the vast percentage of the population. That is what predictive programming is all about. And that's why it seems so ludicrous and ridiculous that they can literally come on TV, look you right in the eyes, and tell you, by the way, we looked into our crystal ball, and uh, nine months from now, our hospitals will be overwhelmed on exactly October 4th, <laughs> and you're going to be locked down again, and there's going to be all new restrictions. And the people are like... Oh, okay, like it makes sense. And like the news doesn't lie about every single thing that they told you. And the government doesn't lie about every single thing they told you. But ladies and gentlemen, the good news is we already have awakened everybody. Look how many people were involved in the protests and all over 5 million people. So now we just got to stop them from going back to sleep. And it's a lot easier. Once someone's already awake, it's really hard to put them back to sleep. It's easy to make them not care, and that's what they've done here. But when you can show them things like Bill S-233, which is written in black and white, and they are reading in the Senate as we speak, it's pretty hard for someone to play, uh, call it a conspiracy theory or pretend like it's not going to affect them right away. This, it, people are awake. People are far more open to the information. So that's why we have to do events like this. That's why we have to talk to people like this. That's why we have to walk around wearing stuff like this. So we get people talking. Because when we get people talking about the bad stuff they're trying to do to us, people will stand up. People will just say no. We will keep United Noncompliance alive. And we will finally move to phase three, holding these people accountable and setting our country free. Thank you, everybody. I love you. God bless you. I'm not going anywhere. We're going to be over here. So if you want to meet me, I'm just going to be right by the white tent. Thank you.